I'm Kirsten. Welcome to Real World Science. Today, we're going to talk about something that really matters. It's called matter. What is matter? Well, that's what this program is all about. Properties of matter. You've heard the saying, it doesn't matter, or what's the matter? But did you know that in science, the word matter has a completely different meaning? Matter is the stuff that makes up everything in the universe. The sun, all the planets, and the earth are matter. Everything on earth is matter too. Rocks, water, plants, animals, and people. Everything that exists in the universe is matter. What exactly is matter? It's not an easy question to answer, but we can begin to understand matter a little bit more by looking at some of matter's characteristics, qualities, and properties. Some matter is hard. Some matter is soft. Some matter is round. And some is square. Some matter can burn easily. Some matter can pour easily. Some matter can fit inside a bag. And some matter is bigger than the earth. Some matter is white. Some matter is many colors. And some matter has no color at all. Some matter is hot. And some matter is cold. You see, hardness, shape, temperature, color, and size are all examples of properties of matter. Matter may have many different properties, but all matter is formed in the same way, from tiny particles called molecules. To better understand how molecules make up all matter, take a look at this painting. From a few feet away, you see a picture of people in a park. However, if you look real close, you'll see that the picture is really made up of small dots of paint. All matter is formed in pretty much the same way. All matter is made up of particles called molecules. A molecule is the smallest part of matter that still has the properties of matter. States of matter. All matter is made from molecules. However, all matter can exist in different forms or states. We can classify all matter as either a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Mountains and trees are examples of solid matter. So is a desk and a pencil. All solids hold their shape unless you do something to change them. Modeling clay is soft, but it is still a solid. It will hold whatever shape you put it in. Some matter is found in a liquid form. Liquids can be thin like water, or thick like milkshakes or syrup. All liquids can be poured. Liquids do not have a shape of their own. All liquids take the shape of the container that holds them. Some matter is found in the form of a gas. The air we breathe is gas. Steam rising from a boiling pot is gas. And the sun is a ball of gas. All gases will completely fill any closed container. An example of a gas filling a container is when you pump air into a tire tube. When released, gas floats. No matter whether it's in the form of a solid, liquid, or gas takes up space. And no two objects can be in the same place at the same time. Each block seen here is taking up space, but no two blocks can be in the same space at the same time. 
if you want to put a block in the same space as another block, you have to move the other block first. Then, and only then, can it take up the same space. Liquid takes up space too. The water is filling up the space inside the glass. Now, if we added another liquid, like oil, it cannot be put in the same space that is already taken up by the water. Gases, like liquids and solids, take up space too. The air being blown into this hot air balloon is taking up space inside the balloon. Measuring matter. The amount of space that matter takes up is called its volume. It's important to measure how much space matter occupies. Liquids are measured in units such as liters, milliliters, gallons, quarts, and cups. Solids are usually measured in cubic centimeters. To find the volume of a solid object, like this block of wood, all you have to do is multiply the measurement of length, which is 5 centimeters, by height, 5 centimeters, by width, 5 centimeters, for a total of 125 centimeters. Another characteristic that is similar to all matter is that all matter has mass. What is mass? Mass is the amount of material or matter in an object. An elephant, for example, has more mass than a bee. And even though this baseball and this tennis ball are the same size, the baseball has more mass. The mass of any object can be measured. A unit used to measure mass is called a gram. One gram is a small amount of mass. For example, two paper clips have a mass of about one gram. A nickel has a mass of about five grams. A baseball has a mass of about 150 grams. In solid matter, the molecules are packed very tightly together and they're held together by tight bonds. When matter is in a solid form, like this piece of wood, it has a very definite volume and definite shape. But even if you change the size and shape of a solid, like if you cut the piece of wood, it still remains a solid. When you mix solids together, like these marbles, they do not lose their shape or their size, and they can easily be separated from each other. Now, Let's talk about measuring matter in a liquid state. Liquids have a definite volume that can be measured, but liquids have no shape of their own. Liquids take the shape of the containers they are in. If there is no container, a liquid will spread into a shallow puddle. The molecules of a liquid are packed together closely, but move around freely. This allows the molecules in a liquid to flow. Liquids are also called fluids. Fluid means a substance that flows. If you mix liquids together, say for example, like milk and chocolate syrup, unlike solids, they become very difficult to separate from each other. Gases, unlike solids and liquids, can change volume very easily. That's because gas molecules move in all directions at very high speeds. The volume and shape of a gas is the same volume and shape of its container. Take, for example, a balloon that is filled with air. Air is a gas. Now, gas molecules will spread out and fill all the space available, as witnessed when you let the air out of the balloon. Gases, like liquids, also mix easily together and once mixed, are difficult to separate from each other. And even if we can't see the mixture of gases, we can certainly smell some of them. That's why you can smell a burning fire 
or hamburgers cooking on a grill. It's the mixture of gases in the air. Changes of state. One very important fact to know about matter is that it can change forms. All that is needed to change the form of matter is a change in temperature. Making matter hotter or colder will change the form it is in. Scientists call these changes of state. We also call them melting, freezing, and boiling. This piece of baking chocolate is solid, but you can change it into a liquid very easily just by adding heat. As more heat is applied, the chocolate that was once solid changes to a liquid. Solids change to liquids when you add heat. You can see a solid change to a liquid state by leaving frozen juice on the counter at room temperature. The frozen juice turns to liquid and you can pour it. So, solid matter can change state. When solids change to liquids, we call that melting. When solids melt, they change to a liquid. Liquids can also change states. When you cool liquid gelatin by putting it in a refrigerator, it hardens and changes to a solid state. We say liquids solidify when they change to a solid state. Liquids can also change to a gaseous state. Liquid in a gaseous state is called vapor. Liquid water changing into water vapor is an example of vaporization. There are two main types of vaporization. Some vaporization takes place only on the surface of a liquid. This process is called evaporation. An example of evaporation in the real world is when a puddle dries up after a rainstorm. Here's what happens. The water molecules in the puddle gain energy from the sun, air, and ground, and they gradually escape into the atmosphere. A liquid can also change to a vapor through the process of boiling. In boiling, vaporization takes place inside the liquid as well as on the surface. Each liquid will boil only at a certain temperature. That temperature is called its boiling point. Now gas can change back to a liquid too. We can demonstrate that by using a metal pie plate filled with ice. The water vapor cools when it hits the metal and changes back to a liquid. This process is known as condensation. Condensation is the process by which a gas turns into a liquid. On a hot day, water droplets will form on a glass of cold lemonade. That's because the cold glass changes the temperature and cools some of the water vapor in the air to change to a liquid state. That's condensation too. Why does matter have the ability to change? Well, it's because of those tiny little particles called molecules that make up all of matter. In solid matter, as you recall, the molecules are very close together. The molecules are held by tight bonds when you add heat, the molecules move faster. The bonds loosen and cause the molecules to separate and move apart. They're still kind of close, and that's when solids melt and change from a solid to a liquid. If more heat is added, the molecules will move even faster. That causes molecules to bump into each other, and then they start flying off into space. That's when a liquid evaporates and changes to a gas. When heat is removed, the molecule particles slow down and begin moving closer together again and become liquid. Condensation. If you freeze the particles, they will again change to a solid state. Well, there you have it. Just about everything you need to know about matter. Now you know that.
All matter is formed from tiny particles called molecules. And all matter takes up space. And all matter has mass. Matter can exist in three forms, solids, liquids, and gases. And that matter can change form by adding or removing heat. Matter, it's everything that exists in the real world. Thank you.